All right, welcome back everyone to Plant-Based Kidney Health. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. My partner is Michelle Krosmer. We've been with you guys for what seems like an eternity talking about kidney disease. So Michelle, I think today we wanted to address a question that came in specifically around saturated fat. So let's sort of take a step back at the 800 mile view. You know, what the heck is saturated fat? What counts as saturated fat in the diet? So just so we do a little bit of an introduction, because I think this will be a really important topic today. Yeah. So, I mean, saturated fat is just a type of fat. It's found predominantly in animal products, um, especially, you know, dairy and meats. It's also higher in some plant foods, especially like coconut oil and palm oil, but you even find small amounts of saturated fat in some nuts and seeds. Um, you know, what makes I guess if you think of like the difference of saturated fats, um, saturated fats are solid at room temperature. Um, that's because of the molecular structure. We definitely don't need to go into that. I don't think think people really care about that, but that's why, you know, butter is solid at room temperature because it's mostly saturated fat and olive oil, which is mostly unsaturated fatty acids is liquid at room temperature. Um, of course, we care about distinguishing um, you know, what saturated fats are, because we're going to talk about, you know, how saturated fats or high intake of saturated fats potentially affects kidney health. And that's obviously relevant for all of our listeners and our followers. So um, having said all that, Dr. Hashmi, is there any research on saturated fat specifically in the kidney disease population? Well, funny you should ask that question because yes, there is. So let's take you on a little journey about saturated fat. So remember the distinguishing factor here is we are not talking about fats in general. In fact, the data on polys and monounsaturated fatty acids and kidney health is positive. We're specifically talking about the negative associations of saturated fat. And for all those folks out there who do things like keto diet, they don't understand the medical version of keto diet. They just see what they see on TV, which is I eat all the bacon and, and sausage and everything bad that's for me, and I'm going to magically be healthy. That is furthest from the truth. Ketone bodies can be very healthy as far as kidney health goes, but that's got nothing to do with saturated fat. So there's a study from AGCN, which is American mm -hmm. Journal of Clinical Nutrition 2010. This was a cross-sectional study where they were looking at associations between dietary fats and the presence of protein in the urine. So remember, protein in the urine is a marker for worsening kidney function. It's a marker for kidney disease, it's a marker for heart disease, and it's a marker for overall death. The more protein you spill, the higher the risk of bad things. So in this particular case, they were looking at essentially people who had a kidney function below 60. There were about 19,000 participants in the study. This is the REGARD study. I don't know how they come up with these awesome mnemonics, but it's reasons for geographic and racial differences in stroke. And anyway, so the people were about 45 and over at the time of enrollment. And what they found was that the highest saturated fat was linked, not causing, was linked to higher amounts of protein in the urine. So in other words, the highest intakes had about a 33% higher risk of having protein in the urine. Well, that's one study. Is there more? Funny you should ask that question. Even though Michelle didn't ask, I'll tell it anyways. So Journal of Clinical Medicine, 2022, September. This was looking at essentially the survival of 54 patients on dialysis. Remember, we've talked about the fact that dialysis mortality at five years is about 50%. Now, that's a terrible statistic, and it hasn't changed much. But what they found, once again, was there was a significant relationship between elevated saturated fatty acid intake and the risk of death. So in other words, people who were doing a lot of foods that were high in saturated fat, and they did this through a questionnaire. So for all the negatives of a questionnaire, it's not the best study, but it's still adding to the literature. And what they found was the risk of death went up substantially. Then it turns out that when you start to look at, for example, patients who are already diabetic and heart disease, you start to see the saturated fatty acid is already intake is already higher in those patients and the risk of death is already higher. Then there's a study, and this is a study looking at mice, um, 
published back in 2005. And what they found was that when you start to go higher on the intakes of energy, specifically with a high fat diet, you get a uh, imbalance where you start to put fat inside the kidney. We call that renal lipogenesis, and you start to shut down the kidney's ability to be able to dispose or break down that fat called lipolysis. So essentially what happens is the fat deposits inside the kidney. It leads to inflammation and kidney injury. Then there's another study, 2018. This is looking at, this is uh, Ashkari and colleagues, nutrition and metabolism. And um, in this particular one, what they were looking at, and it was about a 6.1 year follow-up. So what they found was that diets that were higher in fat and higher in sugar, they had an about a 46% higher risk of chronic kidney disease. So oftentimes what we will find is, is that higher saturated fat, fatty acid intake in their diet, those same people also have higher sugar. So it's tough to tease out the separation, but 46% higher risk versus if you had a lacto-vegetarian diet, it was actually protective against CKD by 43%. So 46% higher or 43% lower. And then there's another study in 2017, which talked about, and this was uh, done in um, Iran and hypertension research. And what they found was that when you start to look at red and processed meat, which is higher in saturated fat and sweets, you saw that after about 11 years of follow-up, there was a clear correlation, a causation correlation with the decline in renal function. And this was looking at the participants from the nurse's health study. And once again, what did they find? The highest thirds of the people that had the high fat, high sugar diet had a 49% higher risk of developing chronic kidney disease, independent, independent of diabetes and hypertension. In other words, just the act of saturated fat, regardless of whether you became a diabetic or not or had high blood pressure, was contributing to chronic kidney disease. So with that, Michelle, what's the data in terms of how much saturated fat should somebody take in, you know, the limit, and what kind of guidance can we give them? Yeah, so what's considered excessive saturated fat intake is typically of 10% or more of the calories you take in are coming from saturated fat. Um, so if someone had a 2000 calorie diet, that would be about 200 calories or about 22 grams coming from saturated fat. But again, we are looking at a population of kidney disease being at high risk of cardiovascular disease. We don't want to be consuming um, excessive intake. So typically it's recommended to keep it at 5% or even less of your, um, per, of your calories coming from saturated fat. So that would be about a hundred calories on a 2000 calorie diet, about a hundred calories coming from saturated fat, which is about 11 grams of saturated fat in a day. Um, of course, not everyone eats 2000 calories. Some people need more, some people need less, but that's just to give you kind of a, an estimate. And when you think about how much um, saturated fat is in specific foods, um, so three ounces of a lean ground beef is about five grams of saturated fat. An ounce of cheddar cheese is about five grams of saturated fat. A tablespoon of butter is about seven grams of saturated fat. A tablespoon of coconut oil is about 11 grams of saturated fat. And we're going to get into coconut oil a little bit more um, in a minute. But also a lot of times, you know, of course, we said it's predominantly in these animal products, but also ultra processed foods like cakes and pastries and pies um, can be loaded in saturated fat and sugar, which Dr. Hashmi, you talked about it. Sometimes it's not just the saturated fat alone. It's the saturated fat and the high amount of sugar um, and then fast food, right? We think of things like, um, and I looked up a couple things ahead of time, but McDonald's, if someone gets a quarter pounder with cheese from McDonald's, that's 12 grams of saturated fat. They get a uh, small fries, another one and a half to two grams of saturated fat. If you get the bacon, egg and cheese, you know, breakfast sandwich or breakfast biscuit from McDonald's, that's 13 grams of saturated fat. So a lot of these ultra processed fast food um, and kind of convenience foods, that's where sometimes people can find a lot of these high saturated fat 
amounts. And so that's why we're always, um, you know, of course, we're promoting predominantly whole food plant based, but ultimately getting away from the ultra processed is a huge part of it because that's where you can find a lot of the saturated fat in the diet. Um, oh, and then, yeah, so about coconut oil, and I know we we're going to talk about that. That's where it always comes up. I know the question I'm sure would come up in our comments is, well, what about coconut oil? And I, I'd say the important things to know about coconut oil, as I mentioned, you saw it's high in saturated fat. Where there's some controversy on that is that um, coconut oil is like this better saturated fat because it's mostly medium chain triglycerides um, as opposed to longer um, you know, longer chain fatty acids in other saturated fats. And there is some mixed research on medium chain triglycerides as far as the metabolism of them and do they raise HDL cholesterol, mm-hmm. um, but they're also seen to raise LDL cholesterol. And so I'll, you know, Dr. Hashmi, I'll have you chime in on anything you want to say about that. But ultimately I think since people, and what my recommendation is, is since people are at a, with kidney disease are at a higher risk of dyslipidemia. And um, we know that this can play a role in, um, you know, the fat around the kidneys and kidney disease progression and heart disease risk. I think overall, we still want to keep saturated fat low and limited in the diet, even if it's coming from coconut oil. Um, I don't have a problem if someone's using a recipe that has coconut oil, but for daily um, use or regular use of oils, I usually recommend an olive oil or avocado oil, which are mostly unsaturated fatty acids. And then if you need to use coconut oil here and there, that's not a big deal, but I definitely don't recommend people are putting tablespoons of it in their coffee by any means. Um, And then having said that too, when we think of like coconut milk, right? Like if you make a curry dish, you are going to use coconut milk and you can try to use an almond milk or an oat milk, but it's not going to be the same because it doesn't have that richness and creaminess. But I think in dishes like that, it's important to realize what else is in that meal. Typically a curry meal is going to have um, legumes and vegetables and spices and seasonings that are rich in vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. And all of those are different paired with coconut milk that has a little bit higher saturated fat than if you ate a McDonald's meal that is high in saturated fat and doesn't have all those other um, beneficial things. So anything you want to add, Dr. Hashmi, on coconut oil? Yeah, no, just, you know, the the take home on coconut oil is if you're looking for MCTs, get MCT oil. And even if the bottle says it's made from coconuts, remember half of coconut oil is about MCT. The other half is stuff you don't need. So this is why when you're looking at MCT and you have to understand there's different types of MCTs, capric, caprylic acid, et cetera, lauric acid, and so forth. You have to understand what the research on that is, and it's a very tricky area. But MCT oils have a lot of benefits. They can raise ketones in the blood, which can have a lot of secondary impacts on brain health, Alzheimer's, dementia, migraines, seizures. They can improve kidney functions. They're useful in things like um, polycystic kidney disease. So lots of good thing, but that's not coconut oil. So if you're looking for MCTs, go get MCT oil and not coconut oil. All right. There you guys have it on saturated fat and kidney disease, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks, guys.